Hey guys! Hey guys! Welcome back to another amazing episode of Real Talk. Oh yes. I'm your host, Alina Islam. I'm your editor-in-chief at The Hardy Soul and holistic nutritionist. I am Dr. Nadia Kementis, a naturopathic doctor and your co-host. Mm -hmm. And today we are talking about a topic that our audience really, really cares about. Actually, this topic mm -hmm. affects about a hundred million Americans right now. Isn't that insane? A hundred mm -hmm. million American adults. And in case you didn't see the title of this video, we are talking about diabetes, specifically yes. type 2 diabetes as well. Yeah. So this is something that we know uh, we get a lot of questions about. We have clients about diabetes. It's in our family. I feel like everyone here watching probably knows someone who has diabetes well, and or has it. Everyone has to regulate mm -hmm. their blood sugar levels, yes. whether you're diabetic or not. Yeah. So stay tuned, guys. We will be right back. Hey guys, and welcome back to Real Talk, where we are going to be talking all about type 2 diabetes. We are going to be talking about some of the causes, some of the symptoms and what it feels like, how to tell maybe if you are pre-diabetic and the symptoms to look for, and also some of the effects. What are the long-term effects of diabetes? And what natural solutions mm -hmm. exist to help support you if you are pre-diabetic, mm -hmm. if you have a family history of diabetes, mm -hmm. Or if you just struggle with blood sugar imbalance yeah. in general, yeah. these can help you as well. Um, as usual, yeah. this is completely live right now, so we are monitoring the comments and questions. Let us know who you are, where you're from, if you, know, you want us to expand on something while we're talking or you disagree, uh, we will try to get to you. There is an article linked mm -hmm. in the description of this video for you guys to read a little bit more on diabetes about, but I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Say hi to us. Tell us where you're from. We're just going to get started talking about diabetes and blood sugar as a whole. So, Nadia, Alina. let's first talk <laughs> yes. about blood sugar. Yes. So, before oh. we even get into Which diabetes is. and talking about type 2 diabetes and how to reverse it, I feel like we should just talk about why blood sugar balancing is so important and kind of what it even means. I love that. Is. Why do we care? Why mm -hmm. is sugar in our blood? What does this do? Why do we need mm -hmm. sugar? And how do we get the sugar in our blood mm -hmm. to the cells that need the sugar and the energy that the sugar provides? Exactly. So when we're talking about blood sugar, guys, we're really talking about glucose. 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 It fuels us and our brain and gives us energy. So you need it for you know, all metabolic functions and processes. So blood sugar is not a bad thing. But when it is a bad thing is, so ideally you want your blood sugar to kind of just be even. steady. Yeah. Be very even, even keel. And what ends up happening in this modern day and age is because of our diet and because of our lifestyle, our blood sugar starts sort of doing this. Yeah. It's like this roller coaster. Anytime you eat anything mm -hmm. that contains any sort of caloric value, mm -hmm. it's going to make a change in your blood sugar because as you yeah. take in food, your body is going to break it down mm -hmm. and then it's going to take the energy and mm -hmm. the nutrients and everything yeah. that comes from it yeah. to bring it to different areas in your body. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to do that, it mm -hmm. needs to be able to regulate your highways, which is your mm -hmm. circulation system, yep. um, appropriately. And kind of just as you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, with blood sugar, you don't want it to be too high. Mm -hmm. And you also don't want it to be too low. Yeah, so when you're hypoglycemic or you feel like you're going to pass out glycemic. if you're not going to have a, you know, a lollipop the next second. Exactly. So, yeah. So that's why we sort of care about blood sugar balance. And... I know in this context today, we're talking a bit more about blood sugar balance uh, in terms of diabetes mm -hmm. and maybe people think about weight gain as well, but I feel like we should tell people as well, what else happens when your blood sugar is out of balance? So for example, one of the things that comes to mind for me mm -hmm. um, when your blood sugar is out of balance is you have a bit more, like it affects your mood, right? Oh, absolutely. Your energy mm -hmm. and mood 
are absolutely tied to your blood sugar yeah, balance. Exactly. You can have brain fog or irritability. It's kind of like being hangry yeah. <laughs> all the time, right? And you're just like, I can't function. I'm just so irritable and angry because I need something in my system. Absolutely. Um, and needing to snack very frequently, for example. You're even yeah, your hunger cues yeah. are affected by mm -hmm. poorly regulated blood sugar levels. Yeah. Um, another thing is also your digestion. Oh yes. Because when you have too, if you're, let's say you're eating way too much sugar in your diet, uh, that's feeding your bad gut bacteria, right? right. And then yes. what happens then? <laughs> well, then all the mm -hmm. things get messed up. And as soon as all you have things. an unhappy yeah. tummy, then not only are you looking at weight gain, mm -hmm. uh, hormonal irregularities, yeah. and uh, immune function mm -hmm. compromise, it's... Yeah. As you guys know, we love the gut. It is mm -hmm. the center of everything. So the healthier and happier our gut is and the more balanced our flora yeah. is in our gut, mm -hmm. uh, the, happier, the happier all systems yeah. are. And there's just going to be less bloating and gassiness no, and the constipation, bloating. all of those things. And the where gassiness. You just feel like, you know, nobody, meh. Nobody's got time for that. <laughs> no. no. And if you want to learn more about bloating, guys, <laughs> check out last week's episode oh, yeah. where we did talk all about bloating. Um, yeah. So one of the other things, too, um, of course, is heart disease, which I feel like people don't make the connection as much, although it is, it is popping up more now in mainstream media, the connection of sugar to the circulatory system, oh, yeah. heart disease. So, so, and I mean, this also mm -hmm. goes a little bit more in line with mm -hmm. diabetes and mm -hmm. all of the really serious things that can come from being yeah. diabetic long term. Yeah. Um, and one of them is your heart and your circulatory mm -hmm. system. So when you have chronic... Mm -hmm high blood sugar levels mm -hmm. and then resulting high insulin levels, yeah. which is a hormone that your body, your pancreas secretes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to actually help bring the blood, uh, sorry, the sugar in your mm -hmm. bloodstream into the cells that need it. Yeah. If that is constantly high because you have so mm -hmm. much um, sugar in your blood, that mm -hmm. can be actually damaging to your blood vessels, which is yeah. not good. Yeah, for sure. And then when you're damaging those blood vessels, you're Basically, anything that the blood vessels touch, whether, or you know, your nervous system, your circulatory system, they all get affected. Oh, absolutely. So it's not good. No, there <laughs> so, was, uh, I believe, yeah. the stats. So mm -hmm. if you are a diabetic female, mm -hmm. if you've previously had one heart mm -hmm. attack, if you are diabetic, you have two times the chance of having a second heart attack, and you actually have mm -hmm. four times the chance of having heart failure. That's crazy, guys. That is the very yeah. close connection between mm -hmm. the circulatory or your cardiovascular mm -hmm. system and diabetes and blood mm -hmm. sugar regulation. So For sure. And we mentioned this to you guys because, mm -hmm. again, you don't have to be diabetic right now, but no. understanding that blood sugar regulation in general is an important concept for weight loss, for uh, mood, mood, digestion, digestion energy. Essentially all aspects of your health. Yes. All aspects of your health. So yes. this is definitely useful for everybody. So, okay. Now that we've talked a little bit about blood sugar balance and also the role of insulin, um, we do just want to first clarify as well that, that we are talking about type 2 diabetes today. Right. There are two types of diabetes, are there not? Exactly. Well, there's three actually, but... We'll get into the main two types. Yep. So there's type 1 and there's type 2. Now with type 2, you can reverse that naturally through... Uh, lifestyle changes and modifying your diet um, but when it comes to type 1 diabetes unfortunately that is something where you know you you're are insulin dependent. dependent you're dependent on yeah. insulin it's when so your pancreas is supposed to make insulin your hormone um, but of course in type 1 diabetes there is that insufficiency of insulin so you're not able to actually make any insulin to start right so yeah. there's there's two really important things yeah. and we won't get too crazy into yeah. the science world for you guys mm -hmm. Um, but essentially what's important to remember yeah. is the body needs glucose to give our cells energy. Mm -hmm. So that means when glucose is in our blood, we need to bring it from there into our cells. Mm -hmm. Insulin helps transport that into our cells. Yeah. It's like that little vehicle or messenger that's coming around knocking on the door. So your cells are like a little house. Exactly. Insulin's going around going like, hey, knocking on the door, do you want some glucose? And they say, sure, come in. Exactly. So but. something that happens with mm -hmm. our cells is that there's a certain tolerance level or yes. sensitivity loss mm -hmm. that ends up happening when we have too much sugar in our blood for all the time, all the time chronically. Yeah our cells actually start to get less sensitive to insulin. So, exactly. So this is called insulin resistance. And the way that 
so I started this analogy of someone knocking on the door oh, like too that. to lead yes. into this one. It's like your annoying friend or <laughs> the salesman <laughs> like Nadia the who keeps <laughs> who keeps knocking at your door right being like hey you want to hang out hey you want to hang out you want to hang out and after a while you're going to keep you're I'm gonna resistant them. you're just like I'm just going to turn the lights off and yeah. pretend no I'm not home no one is home get nobody away nobody is home I don't want you and you're like but I have all this sugar for so you so then the only way that she's going to get mm -hmm. in is actually to recruit more of her friends mm -hmm. so they Let's can bang ask Nadia. louder <laughs> yeah and shake the door mm -hmm. so that I have to open it. And the same thing happens in the body. It's the exactly body the needs thing. to actually produce and send mm -hmm. more insulin mm -hmm. in order to the, for the cells to respond. And that creates a more vicious cycle, guys. Absolutely, because the mm -hmm. more your pancreas has to work to produce more insulin, you mm -hmm. actually end up damaging the pancreas cells, mm -hmm. and then you can actually yeah. stop producing insulin. That's that's pretty bad. So, and that's really bad, which means mm -hmm. that you would be dependent on external sources of yeah. insulin, yeah. um, i.e. like insulin injections. You mm -hmm. may know diabetic people, mm -hmm. friends, family members, yeah. or yourself that have to mm -hmm. do this uh, because your body's actually stopped just producing It's not capable anymore because it's worn out exactly. from just overexertion. And that's type yeah. 2. So with type 1 guys, mm -hmm. often it can be attributed more to um, an autoimmune attack yeah of the body mm -hmm. self-attacking the pancreas, destroying those cells, and then being unable yeah. to produce insulin. Yeah. And usually it uh, happens in early childhood or yeah. adolescence. Like you'll know, basically yeah. at a very early stage. And it can be very serious. Yeah. Actually, it can be very, very serious mm -hmm. because as you guys realize, mm -hmm. if your body cells mm -hmm. are not able to get mm -hmm. energy, yeah. a whole bunch of things start shutting down. The whole body. <laughs> the whole body starts, the whole body shutting, starts down. shutting down. So today, again, we are just going to be talking about type 2 diabetes, um, not getting into type 1 diabetes as much. So I guess we can talk a little bit about the causes of type 2 diabetes as well. And we won't spend too much time here because I feel like a lot of people sort of know these things intuitively. What we will get more into is, of course, recognizing those early signs and symptoms and, of course, how to reverse it naturally and action plan. You know what, though? But I yeah. feel like diabetes has become mm. one of those things where people talk about it and it's such a commonly diagnosed yeah. issue. But I feel like people are not aware of how severe and yeah. how serious That's also true. diabetes is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's sure. kind of We've kind of been resistant Insulin it's resistant. <laughs> Such bad jokes on this show. I know, so bad. <laughs> Very bad. Um, but we've become kind of resistant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do yeah. you feel the same way? Yeah, a little bit. It's just it, I think when we, you start seeing that it impacts, and that's why we wanted to start off the show too, saying like it impacts digestion, yeah. your mood. It can lead to high blood pressure to your full body. It's everything because it's it's very funny when we talk about diabetes. People just start thinking about weight gain. Yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah. Which mm -hmm. naturally does, and this kind of goes Affects into the causes, too. because yeah. obesity and excessive weight gain mm -hmm. is very closely tied yeah. with type 2 diabetes. Of course. Same with a sedentary lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, stress, stress. So, and chronic stress. Yeah, so stress is a very interesting one. So I feel like you guys watching are probably like, yes, we know if you eat too much sugar, uh, maybe too many simple carbs, um, you know, diet has an impact not exercising enough has an impact, but I think people don't really recognize the impact of stress as well because your stress hormone, so you know your long-term stress hormone called cortisol, um, that is telling the body to secrete more glucose, mm. i.e. raise your blood sugar levels. I.e. fear, fear, there's a bear, yeah. we need energy to run from the bear. So all that or energy. a deadline or something. Or no your bears. annoying friend. There are no bears here. in Toronto. Oh yeah, <laughs> run from my annoying friend. Seriously, that, that is like the primal response yeah. of your body exactly. to say stress. Yeah. We need Here's to get energy. away. We need energy. It's fight or flight, right? Except you're not using that energy. Back in the olden days, you were running from the bears. You're running from. You're actually running from a bear or a tiger, or a lion for a few hours, and you're like burning off some calories. Sorry, or you're one with the bears. Let's say tiger. Okay. Maybe yeah. So you're running away from them. You need that energy, right, to escape. But for most of us now, like your brain can't tell the difference between a perceived threat and a real threat. It's true. So. If Nadia's like, oh, I need this at my desk right now. Don't do that. She's turning into my annoying friend. She's my boss. I she's know. everything. I feel like a lot of. <laughs> I'll use another example. <laughs> Jeff, our executive producer, is like, oh, oh he's the I worst. I need to be here on time for our show, Real Talk, and my panic. Stop joking around, off. guys. Get to the good stuff. 
Yeah. I know. So then cortisol uh, basically releases more glucose, right? And that glucose, I'm not using that energy. I'm not burning it off to go run away from Jeff. I'm just sitting here and, you know, doing real talk. So that's still threat. It's still a threat, and yeah. that glucose is now circulating, and just my blood sugar levels are higher. So that's another way, too. Um, Your body is yeah. really good at regulating different mm. levels of mm. hormones, mm. nutrients, everything it needs. Yeah. It has homeostasis and systems in mm -hmm. place yeah. to help try to give you things, yeah. what you need at certain mm -hmm times and places mm -hmm. and when that starts to struggle and get out of balance mm -hmm. that's when we really start to see disease yeah. become yeah. persistent yeah. yeah um i guess we can talk a little bit first actually about the symptoms and maybe some early warning signs people would see and then yeah, we can go into the diagnosis call. as well and actually i want to yeah. say a little hello to so rodney hello rod hey, rodney thanks for tuning in he's from portland and he actually has an mm. a1c of seven and is borderline so mm. i like that you mentioned that so a1c guys mm -hmm. is actually a blood test that you can do for diabetic mm -hmm. screening yeah um, and we're gonna get into that a little bit later yeah. but thanks for putting thanks that for sharing there. yes and hello Claudia from Minnesota hey, Claudia. Uh, she'd like us to be a little more serious we can do that Claudia but we, we also want to be entertaining have some fun. You know. <laughs> but it is a serious subject and that's why we're covering it awesome um, okay, let's talk a little bit about some of those early symptoms of type 2 diabetes that you may see as well. Yes, so, and these can kind of come on mm -hmm. insidiously, right? Yeah. So as we mentioned, you know, the energy, being mm -hmm. really low energy, not yeah. being, feeling very tired all mm -hmm. the time. That brain fog as brain well, that fog. irritability. Um, some very interesting one that happens, so since you have so much glucose circulating in your blood, your kidneys start working a bit overtime to start excreting more of those excess sugars from your body. So that does lead to increased urination. Yep, so feeling like you have to pee and actually peeing, peeing. much more frequently than you usually Exactly. If you're, I always say to my patients, if mm -hmm. your input mm -hmm. is not matching your output, mm -hmm. then there's a balance issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, I like that. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so along with that, uh, increased <clears throat> urination too. You can have other symptoms like that Mood excessive issues or that thirst. I was going to say too. thirst. Yes, because you're thirst. excreting so many fluids, you're going to be thirsty. Yeah. And that dry mouth feeling as well. So all of those things, if you're having that all of the time, yeah, um, definitely an indication. And high blood pressure mm -hmm. as another one, which is also a cofactor mm -hmm. that happens to go hand in hand with obesity or being yeah. overweight too. Yeah, cravings. Yep. Definitely. Um, itchy skin is yeah. actually an interesting one. I believe itchy skin. More, I think it's because of more uh, poor blood flow and poor circulation. circulation. And same poor with poor wound healing. Yes. So if you're someone, especially on yeah. your hands or feet, that mm -hmm. notice mm -hmm. you take forever mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. heal from yeah. cuts or scrapes mm -hmm. um, or blisters or things yeah. like that, that can be a real sign. I believe do, um, you can get dark, darker patches as well, I believe, yeah. of skin yep. as well with diabetes that may be a little bit further down the road Yeah. Um, versus early signs and symptoms, but that's something else that affects the skin. Um, and actually, now that we're talking about the skin, there's also skin tags which I was reading about as mm. well, can be an early sign sometimes of diabetes. If like you're excessive skin tags? Um, excessive skin tags, yeah, especially around like the neck in this area. Mm. Yeah. It's new to me. Okay. I like well, it. it has been uh, associated with that as well. So interesting. it's interesting because I have seen that in some patients, in one of my family members too, actually, oh. who was having a lot of skin tags okay. and then was diagnosed with diabetes after. So it's like, oh. Well, it makes I'm making sense. the connection then. Again, because it's such a multi-system yeah. issue, right? Yeah. You're not just going to see it mm -hmm. in one organ no. system. It's mm -hmm. going to affect multiple organ systems. Exactly. Yeah. In some of the least expected places, I believe. Um, but if there's any other symptoms you guys feel that maybe you have had as well, please comment and let us know. Uh, those are some of the, definitely some of the main ones. And I guess we can now move on to talking a bit about the diagnosis. Um, we know Rodney yes. was talking about his um, A1C. A1C levels. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Nadia, <sighs> yes, what I is know. A1C? Because I think when we <clears throat> think about diabetes, we always think about fasting, uh, blood glucose levels, perhaps, yeah. as the initial measure. Uh, so what is 
this instead? What is the A1C? So the way that I like to mm -hmm. kind of differentiate the two, so hemoglobin A1C is yeah. a blood test that you would get with, and not a finger prick. Mm -hmm. So you can do a finger prick, mm -hmm. prick. Prick, I can't say the word Finger prick. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Finger prick test, you can do an oral glucose yeah. test, and then you can do a fasting oral glucose test as well. Okay. Um, and essentially the difference between the two mm -hmm. is with the hemoglobin A1C test, you're actually getting a um, two to three month period of time, a history mm. of how your blood, your average okay. blood sugar levels have been okay. um, over the past two to three months based yeah. on your actual red blood cells. So they're well, that's actually yeah. very useful then because compared to the other fasting blood glucose one, don't you have to measure that multiple times in a day or over a certain number of hours? You can't, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. and where you see uh, diabetics who yeah. actually have to regularly monitor mm. their uh, blood sugar levels throughout the day, those are snapshots. So if they're taking mm. a finger prick, they're actually seeing, and that can fluctuate okay. if they just ate a meal, if they've gone for a long period of time without eating a okay. meal. It's a much more uh, short period of time in testing. Okay. Uh, anytime that you're actually mm -hmm. getting screening done, mm -hmm. a lot of doc the, the gold standard is moving towards mm -hmm. using hemoglobin A1C because it gives you more mm -hmm. data. Uh, that being okay. said, there can be some fluctuations on it being, like certain conditions can okay. actually skew that result. So your doctor may also want you to do a fasting oral glucose test okay. uh, to absolutely rule both in. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so you can use both. So I, it, I'm thinking of an analogy because I like analogies. I love your analogy. So if you wanted to see how Alina manages her money, you know, it's probably best to look at how I manage my money over a period of two to three times. I two love to three that. months. That's really versus good. Versus looking at one day where maybe I just saw a really nice dress and I spent more money than maybe I usually would have on that day. That's a very good way of exactly. Okay. That's a really good way to put it. There we it. go. No worries. Just yeah. came to me. I want to see like three <laughs> months of your credit card history yeah. as opposed to like just what you did last week. Yeah. Or today. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. And you guys, obviously, this is the mm -hmm. importance of working with a healthcare mm -hmm. practitioner and getting routine and regular yes. blood work done, especially if you are overweight or if you mm -hmm. have a family history of diabetes. Your doctor is going to help you screen regularly so mm. you can take the appropriate steps because mm. type 2 diabetes is reversible, yeah. right? So Definitely reversible. It is not a death sentence in a sense that it once you are diagnosed, yeah. there's nothing you can do and you're on medication for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. No, it's reversible. And that's why screening for it ahead of time and mm -hmm. actually preventatively looking at what yeah. you can do and mm -hmm. monitoring it is yeah. one of the best things yeah. you can do to reverse it. Yeah, definitely. Before some of those other impacts of diabetes start taking place too. So we talked about them a little bit earlier, but now we can talk a bit more of, you know, some of the long-term effects of mm -hmm. chronic diabetes. The longer you have diabetes and you're not reversing it, the worse impact it's having on your circulatory system, your heart disease, high blood pressure, and then you may be on like high blood pressure medications yeah. as well. And you're most likely yeah. going to, again, damage your pancreas to the point where you mm. may not be able to produce enough insulin yeah. anymore. Yeah. And then you have to take yeah. external insulin. Yeah. And, and you know, that's really mm -hmm. disease progression yeah. really yeah. far. And then there's some things which you cannot come back from. So this is a very important point. There are certain things like diabetic retinopathy. Oh, yeah. You know, when your blood vessels are damaged in your retina and then fluid and blood starts leaking out and it impacts your vision, there's no cure for that at this point in no. time. So you can't, if you have some vision loss, you cannot come back from that. No, so true. that's why it's so important when you start seeing, you have to take it very seriously the second you have diabetes. Yep. You don't want to go down that road and have it impact something or like Or if you have a loved one eyes. who you mm -hmm. know is pre-diabetic mm -hmm. or you're worried, yeah. having the support mm -hmm. to help them get on track mm -hmm. or help them regularly monitor yeah. and doing things yeah. together, that, that type of social support mm -hmm. is really, really important mm -hmm. and it'll benefit both of you. Yeah. Um, another... Thing I thought taught I thought about sorry I can't I, I also I can't, I can't. I I can't speak um, was thinking about too is osteoporosis as well oh yeah so diabetes is also associated with osteoporosis and, and greater fracture certain types rates. of cancers as well yeah. yeah and again those are chronic things that are very hard to then come back from as Absolutely. well um, and especially if you're more prone to something like a fracture yes it can heal but again that's more unnecessary 
you're already unnecessary in, things that are happening. Exactly. If you already have yeah. a compromised state and then yeah. you have compounding mm -hmm. diseases going on top mm -hmm. of that, it makes it that much harder to go back from. So yeah. measuring and monitoring regularly Important. and taking the steps and yeah. knowing that this is reversible. Mm -hmm. This is and that's the crazy thing when you think yeah. about how many people mm -hmm. are suffering from diabetes right million. now. 100 million in the states who can reverse this. Yes. Which, Without anything very complicated too, which no. we're going to talk about. Which okay, yeah. and to be fair, mm -hmm. I want to say yeah. making health changes is hard. Yeah. And I think that people mm -hmm. kind of you know, say it's easy and say, yeah. oh, it's so simple. It's but then, very easy to do once you've done it. It's true. But if you haven't yet and you feel like you're so far from it, it's very overwhelming. It can be very overwhelming. Very overwhelming. And this is why mm -hmm. we have an epidemic right now, right? Yeah. So if it was easy, this 100 million people would not have mm -hmm. this problem yeah. in the States. Exactly. Um, but so actually, why don't we start getting into how to reverse it? Yeah. So what mm -hmm. are some of the really kind of basic ways we can support your body? So mm -hmm. say you right now, you're mm -hmm. watching, mm -hmm. we're freaking you out, you're getting a little bit worried, <laughs> yeah. or you actually already know your status and mm -hmm. you know that you're pre-diabetic or, or currently diabetic, diabetic. Um, or someone that you love yeah. is. This is where we're trying to equip you with the knowledge, and it doesn't have to be crazy. And you know, I know basic strategies. Oh, it's super basic, but also just knowing that you don't need to, with all of these strategies that we're going to give you, mm -hmm. it is never a good idea to all of a sudden do all of them at once no. out of nowhere. Because then you're going to get overwhelmed, you're going to get stressed, and remember what happens with all that stress. It doesn't More help. glucose, not helping. And then you feel yeah. shame, and then you're mm -hmm. in a cycle of failure, mm -hmm. and everything is awful. So yeah. small, smart, manageable changes, mm -hmm. one by one, is ultimately what is going to be your yeah. key to success. For sure. Yeah. So a very basic one to start off with. So we'll talk about diet and some strategies over here. One I find um, is definitely trying to eliminate hidden sugars. So there's obvious sugars. There's, okay, I shouldn't be eating that donut or that pastry or that muffin. But then there's things that are marketed to us that we think they're healthy because it says organic and natural and it's in a green box with a plant on it. And or it says gluten free. Or it says gluten free, We've cholesterol free, GMO free. Yeah. So you see all of those health claims, or you even see it in a health food store sometimes, and you think, oh, this is healthy for me to eat. Actually, there's also um, diabetic and di uh, diet versions of mm. certain packaged goods. I know because a family member of mine would ask me, they'd right. send photos and say, oh, can I have these cookies that are diabetes friendly? Right but they're just using another source of sugar aside from regular sugar. And they're still simple carbs like uh, wheat, which spike blood sugar levels so much. So, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Which also yeah. brings me to artificial mm -hmm. sugars, which yeah. can still have an mm -hmm. insulin response. Yes. So, and actually ends up desensitizing your own palate because often yeah. artificial sugars end up having a sweeter taste than regular sugar. Yeah which then makes you crave a higher Even sugar level. Sugar. So it's like a, again, it's like a tolerance yeah. level where you start yeah. having diet soda because mm -hmm. you think that it's better than having mm -hmm. regular soda, but then that actually ends up becoming more addictive and still has Stronger a negative effect. cravings, exactly. exactly. So you just want to stay away from anything that's super sweetened to begin with, whether it's artificial or natural. Um, and then in terms of hidden sources of sugar, I apologize, I went off on a tangent <laughs> on those uh, diet cookies, but other hidden sources, for example, are um, flavored yogurts. Oh yeah. So people think yogurt is very healthy, which you, you know, hate the flavored yogurt. I hate yogurts. flavored yogurt. You know, I know, I pick on it in I like nearly like, every episode. And I, I don't actually know that many people who eat flavored yogurt. All my clients, okay. all my clients. Okay. <laughs> every client who is trying to lose weight or gain control they think they're eating vanilla yogurt as a snack. Uh, it does sound very innocent. It, it does vanilla sound innocent. Vanilla like, oh, yogurt. I'm, they're like, I eat healthy. I'm having granola with yogurt. Yeah. I'm like, what type of yogurt? And then I find out it's vanilla. Then I say, read the label. It's uh, 25 grams of sugar. Yeah. It's, and yeah. then you're eating granola on top, which again is something else that's very high in sugar, yeah. usually around nine or 10 grams per so one serving. This is actually a perfect mm -hmm. time to talk a little bit about yeah. glycemic index. Yes. So do you guys know, this is mm -hmm. a term that has been thrown around mm -hmm. before, your GI, so mm -hmm. your glycemic index of a food. Mm -hmm. It's essentially your body's response to the amount of sugar that's in a food. So yeah. 
Examples of high glycemic index foods mm -hmm. would be? Let's say a pastry. Yeah. <laughs> so you have that, or you know what, even so certain natural sweeteners, which was again another point we were going to talk about, just because something is natural uh, doesn't mean it's not going to spike your blood sugar levels a lot. Oh, absolutely. So let's say raw honey or maple syrup. Yeah, they're That's, still they're high, high, high glycemic index. Yeah, so from a scale of zero to 100, 100 being very high, mm -hmm. around uh, 65 yeah. is what I believe those are. Oh, so, I have no idea the number. Yeah, I think table sugar is 65. Good and for then, you. And then raw honey and maple syrup are around there as well in the 60s. So you don't want to just no. drizzle too much maple syrup just because it's natural. No. Um, and yeah. then you have lower mm -hmm. glycemic index foods. So this is where mm -hmm. fiber really comes into play. Yeah, definitely. Because the higher fiber content mm -hmm. you have with each food, mm -hmm. that's really going to even out your body's ability to regulate blood sugar yeah. levels. So oh, go, so. Well, go on. <laughs> um, lower glycemic foods. So for example, Nadia and I were talking earlier about fruits as well for diabetics. And lower glycemic fruits like your berries. Yeah have a higher fiber content mm -hmm. and actually have a lower, so literally blueberries, mm -hmm. blackberries, mm -hmm. strawberries, raspberries, raspberries. Berries. And you know what? Yeah. And so our whole conversation yeah. was, cause we were like, should we say that diabetics mm -hmm. shouldn't eat fruit? Yeah. And then we don't really, want to discourage people eating fruit. Usually yeah. someone's not diabetic because they're eating too much fruit. Yeah. Usually that is not the core yeah. issue, right? Mm -hmm. And actually choosing fruit over packaged pastries mm -hmm or mm -hmm. um, you know, ice creams mm -hmm. and desserts. It's a natural sweetness yeah. that probably has a, a higher nutritional mm -hmm. profile, mm -hmm. is a whole food, and will help mold your eating habits in a positive way. Exactly. I mean, if you're eating oranges for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. that's not sure, advisable. not a great thing. Um, mm -hmm. And if you ha are extremely sensitive mm -hmm. and you know, you're trying to avoid mm -hmm. and cut down and you're a little bit more advanced, mm -hmm. then yeah, you want to lower or lessen your mm -hmm. fruit intake. You want to monitor your fruit intake. On mm -hmm. the opposite end, yeah. veggies, your green leafy veggies, go Eat to all town. The go crazy. They're your best friend. Yeah. So high in fiber. <laughs> so to recap a little bit there for you guys, um, you know, you definitely want to watch out for hidden sugars. It's okay to eat some low glycemic fruit and maybe be lower your portions maybe for very high glycemic ones like yeah. dates bananas and mangoes um, you know have a small amount but stick to the lower glycemic ones have a ton of veggies of course um, fiber have a lot of fiber actually along with fiber I want to mention uh, good fat and protein as well absolutely it's always the golden rule for blood sugar balance you want high fat high fiber and protein and if you have those three things in a meal you're golden you're good yeah and yeah. actually, and as we mentioned, mm -hmm. to go into another area, mm -hmm. healthy fats mm -hmm. and our healthy omegas yeah. are really, really supportive for our cardiovascular system, mm -hmm. which is, as we said before, something mm -hmm. we really want to support, yeah. um, especially if we're becoming pre-diabetic. Yeah, so you can help lower a bit of that inflammation and that oxidative damage, yeah. I guess, that's being done. So even yeah. if you are working with a mm -hmm. practitioner uh, and you're interested in taking a healthy fish oil, mm -hmm. that can be very protective. Yeah. Um, it's not for everybody though. Mm -hmm. So again, guys with mm -hmm. supplements, you want to make sure mm -hmm. if you're currently on medication, mm -hmm. um, or you're not sure what to take, mm -hmm. work with a practitioner to figure out what dosage is right for mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then actually another note. So number five was do not use artificial sweeteners, um, and be careful of the sweeteners that you are using. Now people may have a question about sweeteners like stevia mm -hmm. and monk fruit and mm -hmm. xylitol because those have a glycemic index of around zero or one and they are safe for diabetics. But do we want to have an over-reliance on them too? Well, no, just like anything. Yeah. I mean, out of the three, xylitol is my preference. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, too much xylitol has a laxative effect and mm -hmm. nobody wants that unless no. you're constipated <laughs> and then that's beneficial, but it's another topic altogether. Um, but do we want to have everything in moderation? Mm -hmm. Even those, do we want to have a reliance on them? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. If we're yeah. using them as a substitute while we start to train our mm -hmm. palate to be less reliant on yeah. sugar, then yeah, it's absolutely. It's about training your palate, right? Absolutely. At the end of the day, just learning how not to have sweetness at every single mealtime. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So obviously here, guys, diet is huge. Mm -hmm. The secondary pillar that is absolutely massive is exercise. Exercise. And the really, really cool thing about mm. exercise is they've done studies, and mm. they actually did a study on, yeah. uh, oh, it was like, 
I believe it was 80 mm -hmm. men. I have to pull it, sorry. I think it's uh, here some, okay. Continue. <laughs> Anyways, they did yeah. a study on this population mm -hmm. of diabetic mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. um, they told them not to change their diet, mm -hmm. just to exercise mm -hmm. moderate intensity yeah. exercise mm -hmm. three to seven times a week. Mm -hmm. And they were able, able to completely reverse That's crazy. their diabetes. Abel, yeah. is that why you're laughing? <laughs> yes. I am serious, Alina. <laughs> but that's actually. I am talking about science. Alina. <laughs> but she said apple. <laughs> okay, so that is actually an amazing fact, though. So not that we are advocating and saying don't do diet and lifestyle at no. the same time. I'm trying to bring light <laughs> on the importance of exercise. Okay. <sighs> I apologize. Exercise and actually, the best... To, okay, so with <laughs> exercise, I'd also like to say there's two hot tips. Mm -hmm. One, you actually want a combination of yeah. aerobic activity yeah. and strength training. Yeah. Both of them actually make your mm. cells more sensitive mm -hmm. to insulin. Yeah. And so a hot tip for that mm -hmm. is if you are pre-diabetic or uh, diabetic, mm -hmm. if you exercise before eating, yeah. you actually improve your insulin sensitivity. It's a fantastic tip. Which is awesome. That's great. Yeah. So actually morning would probably be great. When you wake up, go for a little morning walk or Do a it. jog if you Do can. It. First thing in the morning, it's done. You go feel great. It. You can have your breakfast yes. after. So yeah, exercise definitely, guys. And Again, start off slow, just because that study said you have to do seven times in a week. I said three um, to seven times. Three to seven. Three to seven times. I wasn't listening because I was listening to Abel. But you can start off whatever works for you. If it's a 20-minute walk three times a week, just start off there. It's whatever works. I apologize. Whatever works, guys. No, but exercise is huge. So, And I know yeah. this is, you guys are probably like, yeah. oh, we've heard it before, mm -hmm. diet and exercise. But that is actually yeah. so key. Mm -hmm. Those two things yeah. can come, and those are not medications. Yeah. That is diet and lifestyle yeah. can completely reverse di type 2 diabetes. And to build on that, I think a lot of people think, you know, when you start researching diabetes online, how to treat it naturally, you start looking at other supplements and herbs and things that can mm -hmm. help. But honestly, with something like type 2 diabetes, you really don't even need those herbs and supplements. It's one of those chronic illnesses where all you need is changes to your diet and exercise. And yes, we are going to discuss a couple of supplements or herbs that can help, but really, they are, they're so tertiary. They're, they're on the top. They're, yeah. they're next level. They yeah. will have not half the impact, mm -hmm. not 90% not the amount of impact that diet and lifestyle would have. Yeah. And... Diet and lifestyle can actually mm -hmm. save you money yeah. as opposed to spending more money on, on additional supplements. supplements. Yeah. Although, so while there are some expensive supplements, one came to mind, which is at least cheaper, and I know our audience is like apple cider vinegar. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say cinnamon. Oh, and cinnamon. And actually, we go. had cinnamon a question from mm -hmm. uh, Sukdai. Hi. I'm really sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but I actually <laughs> think I did a pretty good job. Sukdai. Hello, Sukdai. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Um, they were asking, can cinnamon help with type 2 diabetes, which I have. And actually, there has been studies mm, to yeah. show that cinnamon can help regulate blood sugar levels. Yeah. It improves your insulin sensitivity. Yeah. Now, you can take, you don't have to necessarily take a whole teaspoonful. That's actually um, not recommended. No, it's, you can get it in supplement form. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be more potent. It's easier for you to take. But you can sprinkle it yeah. on your food, yeah. right? You can add it yeah. to different, we have amazing mm -hmm. recipes of these beautiful mm -hmm. breakfasts that you made, oh, remember? Yeah, I did, with a lot of cinnamon Yes, in it. and we put a lot of cinnamon mm -hmm. on it to help increase um, blood sugar regulation, which is awesome. So, yes, cinnamon can. Um, the other one we were talking about, apple cider vinegar, you could even just do a tablespoon oh, of apple God. cider vinegar uh, just before a meal as well. And I think there's something happening that I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what is going on? Alina doesn't and know because she can't see the comments. Um, but distractional, hello distractional, said, Nadia, look out, there's a claw reaching for you. And then I was instantly terrified. <laughs> and then was like, what is the claw? Oh, it's this. It's this. It was an experiment gone wrong by our so video our, team. So <laughs> our video team does DIY videos, and one of them was making fun things out of concrete. The claw. You can imagine that this one didn't really make the cut. But we've kept it in the office just because... Just memories. We just want to hang on to the memories. <laughs> you just have to comb your hair. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, Nadia, we need to get okay. back to diabetes. Sorry. Back to diabetes. So supplements, we talked about cinnamon, apple cider vinegar. Um, there are a few other ones. There's chromium. You guys Oh, chromium's chromium. awesome. You may have seen chromium picolinate. So its role in the body, again, is to help um, with that insulin sensitivity, with helping sort of that person uh, open that door to allow that friend in, which is essentially insulin and the cell. For, for those of you who missed that prior part yeah, of the metaphor, that's what I was talking about. literally bringing yeah. the, mm -hmm. the sugar yes. into the cell, which is insulin's role. Mm -hmm. When you create uh, too much of a resistance, mm -hmm. you want these supplements to yeah. help increase your yeah. cell's ability to bring it back into the cell. And you can have more chromium in your diet as well. So chromium is uh, actually pretty rich in brewer's yeast oh. as well. So in some brewer's yeast, guys, you want to sprinkle that on some things. Um, in broccoli as well, it's very high there. So I love broccoli. Can, yeah, broccoli's broccoli's been good to us. <laughs> it is, it's just fantastic. High in fiber, high in chromium, high in magnesium. Um, so it's definitely one of those things you can add into your diet. Mm -hmm. Are there any other herbs that um, or supplements that come to mind for you for diabetes? No. Okay. I have one more. I have, although I think I'm going to butcher the name. Um, Gymnema. Yes. Thank you. You said it for me. I was going to say Huminema. <laughs> Huminema. <laughs> Gymnema Sylvester. That's actually had a lot of studies done on it as well. <clears throat> and you can get that in most health food stores. That is also very good for, I believe, cravings as well and um, blood sugar balance overall. Diet mm -hmm. and lifestyle, guys. Mm -hmm. Let's not beat around the bush. Mostly that. You can do it. Yes. Oh. Get a friend. Honestly, your yeah. number one supplement mm -hmm. that I would recommend is get a friend mm -hmm. to help keep you accountable yep. to making at least one healthy change. Yeah. That alone, mm -hmm. that's amazing. That's all you need. And the last lifestyle pillar, stress. Oh, stress Because we did talk is huge. about this. If you guys, stress and sleep. Yeah. yeah, stress and sleep. You have to have those hand in hand as well. So, you know, when it comes to sleep, if you're not getting enough sleep, your appetite is increased the next day as well, triggering more cravings, which is not helping your blood sugar balance or it's not allowing for full cellular repair at night as well if you're not getting enough sleep. And then with stress, we talked about this too, right? You can't just have, you can't be exercising and uh, improving your diet, but go then just- Go and buy yourself a vacation. A stress case all the time. You're just gonna secrete all that cortisol and bump up your blood sugar, so. Yeah, stress is a vicious, vicious it is. cycle. And it's hard to get out of, we totally understand. Um, but again, something like your daily walk could be a stress reliever and your exercise. And walk with a friend and then you get social support. So yeah, those are really the key pillars guys for reversing diabetes naturally. Uh, let us know if there's anything else that's worked for you. If you have any questions. I wanna say some shout outs. Okay. I wanna say hello to Christine. Oh, Hi, hey. Christine. I wanna say hello to Sarah Shu. Hello Sarah, thank you for watching. You always say the nicest things. It's so nice. Uh, I want to say hello to Vita Jones. Hello, hey. Vita Jones. I also want to say hello to Karuna. Hello, Karuna. The claw should say hello. <laughs> I think hey, the claw girl. Should... <laughs> yes. All right, guys. That's about it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mm. If you missed our last week's episode, or actually it was two weeks ago, if you missed yeah. any of our other episodes, you can find mm. them all in the videos tab on our mm -hmm. page. If you loved what you saw today, make sure you give us a like or a love because we're, we're needy like that <laughs> and we need to see it. You know, we I need wanna, that validation. We love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you um, have more questions too um, and they come to mind later on, you can just Type, type, type away. Yes, and if Not you have a diabetic friend or someone who needs this information, mm -hmm. feel free to send it on send it over to them. To them. For yeah. sure. Thanks but. so much for watching, guys. Uh, until next time. Until next time. Have a great Bye. night, guys. Bye. Hey, hey YouTube. YouTube! Thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. And if you liked what you watched, 
please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Yes, and if you had any questions or comments, mm -hmm. you can just hit us up below. You can also give us a like. And if you missed last week's episode, you can see that right over here. And if you do want to see more of our previous episodes, you can catch them all over here. And also, be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. for our other show, Real Food Live. Thank you so much, guys. Bye! Bye.